So this week on the channel, we're gonna be taking a look at a Graf von Faber-Castell classic that I was able to borrow from one of my local pen friends. This particular one is the Dark Ebony Finish, and I've gotta say, it's a really interesting pen, so let's go ahead and take a look. Now, with this particular box, normally you're supposed to get like a wooden case or a dark brown display box. We didn't get that here. Instead, we got this papery, cardboardy inner box that has three languages on one side and three languages here on the other that kind of more go into the Graf von Faber-Castell Creed, or at least the Creed that's associated with the classic pen. On the inside, we, instead of getting a care and use guide, get a little bit more of advertisement literature for other pens, items, things of that nature from GVFC. Now, once we get past the advertisements, we at least get to the important part, and that is the pen itself. I do like the fact that they at least include a pen sleeve here, along with the pen, to help keep it protected during shipping. And that's pretty important, especially when we take a look at the material that this pen is made out of. Like I was saying earlier, this pen is made of a dark ebony wood, which is the same wood that you would expect to find on the fingerboards of quality classical stringed instruments. Now, moving away from the wood, the first thing that I noticed is this is a pretty stiff yet functional clip. And the cap also has another function of being able to stand the pen straight up on a desk and not have to worry about putting it in a cup or anything else of that nature. Honestly, I don't know when I would ever do that, but it's a pretty cool feature. Moving along though, we get to the heart of the pen. And that is this 18 karat gold two-tone nib that is custom manufactured by GVFC for these particular pens. And I think the two-tone nib really does complement the dark ebony finish. Now, moving on to the way that this pen feels in the hand, I like how it's weighted. The length and the overall weight without the cap is really well done. And I feel that when you do post it, it just makes this pen a little too back heavy. So them making it to where you can actually write with it not posted was a really good decision, at least to me. Everyone's gonna be different there. Now, unscrewing the section from the body, you get to the included converter, which honestly I prefer instead of cartridges because I like to be able to experiment and with a pen like this, pick the right ink for the pen, especially with that dark ebony wood. I'm gonna be a lot more picky with the ink that I put in here so I can get a good contrast and get something that's a little bit more expressive like this pen, at least to me, is supposed to feel. But let's go ahead and get it put back together and take a look at the writing samples with the Graf von Faber-Castell Classic. Now, for these writing samples, we're using Rhodia and Tomoe. The first here is on Rhodia.pad, and the ink that we're using is Pelican 4001 Turquoise. So with Pelican 4001, it's gonna be a dry ink. It's a known commodity for me, so I know how it's gonna perform in pretty much every pen I put it in. And we're seeing the darker shades that I would expect out of a broad nib, not a medium, along with the lighter and mid-tones that we're getting. So this shade is something that I really like to see, and I feel that it brings in the expressive nature of the classic pen that GVFC was going for, or at least charismatic, because that's the word that they use on the website for this pen. So we've seen what the feed can do for the flow of the ink, but what about the feel of the nib itself? So back on Rhodia, I was getting just a little bit of tooth, but nothing major. It was actually gliding pretty well on the page. Now here on Tomoe, it's almost like I'm not writing with anything at all. I'm not feeling the nib on the paper, which in some instances is a little concerning because I feel like that causes me to put a little bit more pressure on the pen itself and then I have to look at the ink flow and go, wait a second, the pen is actually writing. And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that this medium nib is a pretty bouncy nib. It's not a stiff gold nib at all. And you're gonna feel that when you put this pen to paper. I will say one place though, where the nib did not perform, which is not a bad thing, because once again, very few people do it, is writing upside down. When I did that, this nib caught the paper like no other, and actually kind of shot ink everywhere. It was really bad experience and I would not recommend. 10 out of 10, no recommending. Bringing everything back into a coherent statement though, or at least a pseudo coherent statement, I'd like this pen. I mean, first and foremost, thank you Aaron for letting me borrow this and trusting me with it for the better part of two months now. 
It's been a supreme pleasure to write with and an experience that makes me want to get one myself. I really don't like the fact that I've got to give it back to you and I'm breaking the fourth wall something fierce, trying to guilt trip you into letting me buy it off of you. But that being said, for everyone else that's watching this, this is a good pen. Graf von Faber-Castell got the weight and balance of the pen perfectly, at least once again to me, your results may vary here. I also like that this 18 karat nib has a little bit of bounce to it. They could have gone with a stiffer nib or a stiffer gold content, but they didn't. They decided to give this nib a little bit of play, and I think that was the right decision. Another thing that I didn't mention at the beginning of the video, the cap is very well done as well. It only takes like half to three quarters of a turn to uncap the pen, so it's really quick to go from zero to writing. And I think that's something that a few other pen manufacturers should really take note of and start implementing. The only thing I would really say is a con to me with this pen is the price. GVFC has this retailing for $595. Don't get me wrong, this pen has a really good nib and a really good body, but it's not $600 good. But that's gonna be it for this video. Ink up that subscribe button, become a patron for early releases and extras, follow the channel on Twitter and Instagram, and remember, don't drink the ink.